I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and this is a 1976 Ford Bronco that has been sitting in a barn for 30 years. I have here the original sales invoice. This is a very highly optioned Bronco. Again, this is a 1976, has an automatic transmission, traction lock axle, extra cooling radiator, the sport package, power steering, auxiliary fuel tank, AM radio, the rear seat, mud and snow tires, undercoat, and a dealer installed air conditioning system. This brought the original price of this truck to $6,302. Let's take a look around it. The fender flares are not correct. Those have been added. The stripes on this truck are pretty neat. There were a few different stripe packages for the Ford Bronco. Probably the Ford Explorer was the most common. This stripe package called the Sport Package seems to be a lot rarer than the others. If we take a look on the inside, you can see the steering wheel is not correct, but we get a view of the very cool dealer installed air conditioning system. Someone has added an oil pressure gauge over here. The original one must have stopped working. The original rear seat is here. You can see the two filler caps because this does have the normal and the auxiliary fuel tanks. Around back, there's the 1992 sticker, the last time this truck was registered. It's really nice to have a swing away spare like that, frees up the interior room, and you can add larger size tires to the place where your spare should fit. There's a lot going on here under the hood. Broncos always have this really crazy master cylinder setup. You can see the master cylinder comes off at a pretty extreme angle. Here's the air conditioning compressor up here. This truck needs a lot of work, but I think it's pretty much all here and intact. I think the first thing I should do is get this air cleaner out of here. Now I want to take out one of the spark plugs to get some kind of idea of what it looks like inside this engine. That spark plug was really stuck on there. Actually, it looks all right. It's not a completely rusted mess. Let's take my boroscope and look down inside the cylinder. Cylinder wall looks pretty good. Top of the piston looks pretty good. No signs of major corrosion inside there. If we get lucky and the rest of the spark plugs look like this one did, I think the engine is probably okay. I'll pull the rest of them off of this side. There's the next one. Looks just as good as the first. These are turning pretty hard. I'm gonna spray some penetrating oil down there. The third spark plug. This one here is turning much harder than the other three did. I'm gonna use my torch and get some heat on it. See if I can loosen it up a little bit. Looks like it set a little mouse nest on fire. I'll let that little nest warm up my spark plug. Let's give it another go. This one only wants to move just slightly back and forth. I'm gonna try some more penetrating oil. Gonna try a larger ratchet. Really starting to bind up. So I'll put some more penetrating oil on and then I'll go back the other direction. Now try to loosen again. I 
there we go was a little concerned that this one would have been a lot rustier considering it was stuck in there so well but it looks the same as the other three were now i'll pull the, all the plugs out of this side real quick i'll do that off camera because it's going to be kind of tricky to get down to them i just got all the spark plugs out for some reason it seemed like this side went a lot easier than the other side but here's the first cylinder second one they all pretty much look the same as the other side did they're not completely encrusted on rust anything like that looks like it's pretty clean in there let's give it a quick check with the boroscope to make sure now we're in the cylinder cylinder walls look the same as before top of the piston looks just fine You can see where the piston and the cylinder wall meet right there. It's not filled with corrosion and rust. So I think this engine survived those 30 years without any great damage to it. Now I'm going to squirt some oil down in the cylinders. And I'll grab a battery. We'll see if it turns over. Tap the negative on first. Want to make sure that it's not shorted. I just realized that I don't have a key for this vehicle. But that's okay because Fords are really easy to hotwire. Usually on the passenger fender of Fords is the starter solenoid. And they're really easy to trigger. All you have to do is take a screwdriver and touch both the battery source and the starter signal. So I'll pop that off. And then just touch my screwdriver between these two posts. So we can hear our solenoid is working. You see, I don't think that mice have eaten insulation here. Almost looks like it was burnt. So maybe the starter had gone out in this truck and that's why it was parked 30 years ago and never used again. I want to double check that the solenoid is working. So I have one end of my voltmeter connected to the output of the solenoid, which runs down to the starter and the other side onto the ground. Now, when I activate this, we should get battery voltage on this connection right here. We are getting a connection through. The voltage is not very high. That could be because the starter is shorted out. The only way to verify that is to actually disconnect this cable here and then check for proper voltage going through the solenoid. Now with the starter disconnected, let's try this again. We are getting good voltage into the solenoid, but we are not getting it out. I'm not really surprised if the starter cable was burnt from high current load from the starter uh, shorting out then it would likely have fried the solenoid as well. I've connected up a jump pack to the battery. And so now if I connect this clamp to this terminal, if the starter is good, the starter will turn. If it's not, it's not going to do anything. It's going to start draining my jump pack, but it will let us know if I was correct in assuming that the starter was shorted out. Let's connect this real quick. Yep. Starter is definitely shorted out. This cable was burnt and it did burn up the solenoid. I'll need some parts to go any further. So this is as far as I can go today. I think we figured out why the Bronco was parked 30 years ago. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.